So if you like to solve algebra word problems, well, this is a perfect little challenge for you because the type of problem that we're going to be doing here seems to confuse a lot of algebra students. And uh, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. A pump can fill a pool in 10 hours. Another pump can fill it in 15 hours. And the remainder of the question is, how long will it take if both pumps work together? All right, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section. Then I'm gonna show you two ways or two approaches you can use to solve these type of problems in algebra. This is really important stuff, especially for those of you out there that are indeed um, taking any sort of math course that involves algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Now, when you study algebra, uh, you typically uh, learn how to uh, solve kind of a variety very common type of algebra word problems. Uh, these would include like rate, time, motion type of problems, mixture problems, uh, problems that involve money or age. These are classic type of problems. And work problems are also very classic. So when you have two or more things working, uh, you know, one thing works at one time, like let's say a machine, another machine works at this rate. If they both work together or it could be people, you know, what is the time? This is a, an algebra work word problem. So we kind of have to learn how to solve these type of problems. But the first thing we need to do is just take a look at the problem and make sure we use the rule of three, which is always read a problem at least three times before you do anything. Once you read a problem at least a few times, okay, a minimum of three times, you understand what the question here. And the question is, how long will it take if both pumps work together? We need to kind of use some common sense, right? So when you're thinking about this, we're like, well, I don't even know how long this is going to take. But if one pump, right, uh, can fill the pool in 10 hours and another one can be uh, 15 hours, if they're working together, we would think that both together, it has to be under 10 hours. So the reason why I do that is it's always a good idea to, uh, you know, don't forget your common sense in terms of what kind of answer you should expect. So if you get an answer like 30 hours, right, you have to question me like that doesn't make any sense, right? So before you even get into a problem, you should have some sense of what you think, you know, is going to be a, plan of a reasonable range of the answer. It certainly has to be less than 10 hours. Okay, now, uh, once we understand the question, what we really need to understand is how to solve algebra work problems. And this can get a little bit confusing. So I'm just gonna kind of give you a little bit of a formula here. I'm gonna show you another way you can think about these problems. Again, these type of problems tend to confuse uh, students. So if you're a little bit confused, you know, you're not alone. Okay, so here is a general formula. Now, basically you have this, uh, these parts, okay? So one part of the job, okay, we're, we're talking about work here, right? So when we do work, we are completing a job, okay? Now, a completion of a job or a task is usually represented by one. So now, for example, let me kind of uh, explain this here real quick. So if you did one half of a job and I did another half of the job, together one half plus one half, we would have uh, completed the job and that is represented by one, okay? One is the total complete job. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why is this you know, crazy formula written like, like this? Well, this is a pretty good way to model uh, situations algebraically. So here is how it kind of goes. So the time it takes or the rate it takes for one thing. It could be a machine. It could be a person. In this case, it's a pump. The, uh, that part of the job we can represent as a fraction as one over that part. Okay. So this, we might be thinking about like, say, uh, not pull, but pump one, excuse me, pump one. It kind of messed up my little thing here. And then here, this would be the part that pump two would do. Okay. So one over the time it would take for uh, that second pump. Now together, it would be one over that um, uh, amount of time. So we're going to set up an, an equation algebraically, and this is actually easier to kind of see in action. Now, this is one approach, if you can remember this formula. 
Now we have one over part one plus one over part two. And if there's like, let's say three pumps involved, this can kind of continue on. So again, I'm going to show you another approach here uh, in a second, but let's go ahead and solve the problem this way. So what we need to do here is our lovely problem is start identifying the parts, uh, the uh, machines or people involved that is going to do this complete job. So we have one pump, okay, we'll call that pump one. It can do the job in 10 hours. And then we have this other pump, we'll call that pump two. It can do the job in 15 hours. So we'll say pump one uh, is equal to 10 hours, right? That's how long it takes pump one to do the job. Pump two, it takes 15 hours and let let's uh, let x equal the time together okay now over here the, in this equation here this is going to be the time together so one over this is the time for that first pump one over this is the time for that second pump one over the uh, x uh, is going to be the, the time working together okay so let's going to put this all together so we have one over ten okay this represents that uh, the part of the job that that first pump, the faster pump is going to do plus one over 15. This is the slower pump and that's going to equal, okay, the, uh, this pump and this pump working together, it's going to equal one over X and X represents the total time together. Now, again, this is a little bit confusing. I'll show you another way you can kind of structure this in a second. But if you can remember this basic uh, kind of work formula, uh, you can definitely use this directly on all different sorts of work, algebra work prompts. So now it really comes down to your ability to solve this type of equation right here. So 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 is equal to 1 over x. So let's go ahead and take the next step right now, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now I'm going to get back to this prompt, but I have to stop and interrupt at this point because I need your support. So I've been on YouTube for a long, long time. I post pretty much every day. I will continue to post every day unless obviously um, interrupted to some degree, but it is a priority for me to teach mathematics because I just love helping people learn this subject, but I need your support. And the best way for you to support this channel is just hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well as so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. So here is this equation. We have one over 10 plus one over 15 is equal to one over X. Now at this point, a lot of uh, uh, students would be, or people would be kind of confused on how to set up the prom. I actually think that that part, just setting up the prom is a little bit confusing. This right here is an equation that you need to be able to solve in a basic, uh, you know, algebra. Okay, so how do you solve this equation? Well, let's go ahead and go through it right now because obviously we have some fractions. And the best way to solve this type of equation is to multiply the entire thing by the lowest common denominator. Now, this isn't the only way, but it's certainly the easiest way. So let's go ahead and identify the LCD here. So if this was like numeric fractions, 10 and 15, which of course they are, but let's, the, this was a one over here, the LCD would be 30. But because we have this X, we have to throw in that X right there. So the LCD is 30 X. All right, now what we're gonna do is multiply the entire equation by the LCD. And when we do that, we're basically gonna clear the fractions. This makes our life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and see how that works right now. So 30X times one over 10, 10 goes into 33. So we're left with three X, and we got our three X right there. And then we're gonna multiply this 30X. We have to use the distributive property, right? So this is gonna get multiplied by everything here. So 30x times 1 over 15, 15 goes into 32, so that gives us 2x right here. And then 30x times 1 over x, the x is cross cancels, so that's going to be 30. All right, I'll give you some suggestions here if you don't understand the algebra, how you can improve and uh, you know learn this stuff. But at this point, we clear the fractions and we're left with 3x plus 2x is equal to 30. So now this is super easy to solve. Uh, all we need to do is combine like terms, 3x and 2x is 5x, 5x is equal to 30. So all we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by five, 30 divided by five is six. So x equals x equals six hours, right? So that's the time together. Remember x represents the amount of time together. And because these um, hour or these uh, times are in hours, x is in hours as well. Okay, so again, these problems are a little bit confusing for sure, uh, but let's go to take a look at another way that we can uh, solve this problem. 
Okay, so what we could do, we could say, well, let's just let X equal the hours uh, both pumps, um, uh, it takes for uh, both pumps working together. So we could say, all right, well, um, let's do it this way. Remember, we have this concept of one being a completed job. So uh, this pump, okay, whatever hours it takes, uh, this is the faster pump. Okay, so this is going to be the part um, filled by pump one. So that's going to be X hours, right? So whatever, of course, we know it's going to be six hours, right? So the pump's going to run six hours, but let's, we don't know this in advance. But this part, this pump is going to run the same amount of time because these pumps are obviously working together, right? So, you know, we're not talking about different times here. We're going to turn on both pumps simultaneously, and they're going to get the job done, okay? So the X could be uh, the amount of hours uh, that this particular pump uh, you know, that can fill, uh, the pool in 10 hours, and then this is the part where this slower pump that can fill uh, the pump, uh, fill the pool in 15 hours, and together they're going to get the job done. And again, remember, when the pool is completely filled, that represents a completed task of one, right? So like you doing one half of the job, or this pump doing one half of the job, and this other pump doing one half of the job, together they uh, complete the task, uh, which is one. So remember uh, this concept of one, represents a full completed task or job. Okay, so this is another type of equation. It looks similar to the other one, but it actually is a little bit easier to solve. So x over 10 plus x over 15 is equal to one. It's a different equation, but it's just as good to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and solve it right now. Okay, so x over 10 plus x over 15 is equal to one. What is the LCD? This is the best way to solve this. We got one. The LCD here is 30, right? That's the lowest common denominator. So we could just multiply the entire equation by the LCD. And when we do that, we have 30 times x over 10. So 10 goes into uh, 33. So this is gonna be three times x or three x. Uh, of course, remember we're using the distributor property here. 15, uh, well, 30, let me just uh, not go so quick here. I know a lot of you are maybe saying, slow down, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Okay, so 30 times X over 15, 15 goes into 32, so that's 2X, and now 30 times one is 30. All right, so we'll take a look at what we have. We pretty much had the same equation, 3X plus 2X, 5X is equal to 30, divide both sides of the equation by five, X is equal, X is equal to six, six what hours? Because we define X as the number of hours up here uh, it would take both pumps working together. Okay, so these are two different approaches to solve work problems. And the only way you're going to get better at solving work problems is to practice, practice, practice. But again, these type of problems tend to confuse a lot of students. Uh, they kind of remind me of mixture problems as well. Uh, you know, these type of problems, again, are things that you're going to face if you are studying algebra. All right, now, just a quick comment on, you know, some of the algebra, some of the formulas that we, or equations, excuse me, that we solved here. Those are examples of rational equations and LCD, of finding the LCD, et cetera. So if you need help with this level of algebra, I would direct you towards, like, my Algebra 1 course. You'll find a link to it in the description below. Uh, now, if you're in Algebra 2, I teach the same material and more, obviously, in Algebra 2. Uh, in those courses. Now, if you need help with basic fractions, or if you want to uh, kind of learn some basic mathematics and algebra, and you're not just, you know, you're not a math student right now, check out my math skills rebuilder course, because I'll teach you fractions, and I'll also teach you a ton of algebra in that course. Now, if you want to do more of these type of problems, more algebra word problems, of course, I teach you, um, or I go over a lot of different uh, word problems in my various courses, but I also have a ton more of uh, algebra word problems on my YouTube channel that you could practice with as well. But hopefully this little problem was a nice little challenge. And if you enjoyed this uh, video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.